Sometimes you just gotta believe. Hi, welcome to Storytime with Carrot. I'm Carrot. Today, we'll be experiencing the first chapter of a Minecraft story called A Wasted Future, written and narrated by me. I hope you enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Carrot's legacy has been sustained for a century. However, a new bandit king has recently emerged from the mire. Meaner, uglier, and far more vicious than the one before. In his time, he has largely undone everything that Carrot has strived for all but wiping out the entire carrot bloodline. Only one heir remains, and, as though her parents had known her future, she was named Carrot, too. Dear Uncle, I am safe. I don't know if I will ever find a way to get this to you. Luck willing, I'll see you first. Should this letter find you before I do, just know that I am safe. I hope, above all hope, that you are as well. When the bandits set fire to the town, they were looking for me. One of them saw me and alerted the others. I was unarmed and unprepared. They chased me across the waste for two days before we encountered a mangrove swamp. I was able to lose them amidst the sludge. I wandered for another couple of days before I found this uninhabited house. I'd say it was abandoned, but the person's skeleton was still on the floor. I buried them next to another grave nearby and found this paper amidst the things in the cabinet. I will return to claim my title as heir to the Carrot Empire someday. But not until I've dealt with the King of Bandits. He will pay for the destruction of my town, just as his beloved brother paid for the death of my father and brothers. At the end of my soul. All my love, your only niece, C2. Writing that letter to my uncle may have been a waste of time, but on the unlikely chance that I could find a way to send it to him, it was worth it. Besides, what pressing matters did I have to attend to anyway? My life as the pampered heir to the Carrot Empire had ended the day my father and brothers were slaughtered. I'd escaped to the safety of a step-uncle few knew existed, and from there plotted my revenge. By pure luck, the opportunity to follow through had arisen much sooner than I'd expected. Unfortunately, that didn't sit well with the King of Bandits, and his henchmen found me in the town I'd taken under my care years before. Had I known the greasy sludge-eater whose body I'd fed to the bears in the ice wastes was the brother of the Bandit King... I'd have taken better care to conceal my location. But what was done was done, and my beautiful town was destroyed, burned to the ground by the brother of the man who slaughtered my family. Every day I promised myself that I would destroy the bandit king, just like my great-great-grandmother destroyed his predecessor 100 years ago. Every day I promised her memory that I would make it safe for the world to heal again. I decided to stay in the rundown house in the hillside for a little while. There were a few useful resources in the area, and a bunker nearby that would likely have a few things left over from whomever left it behind. Based on location, I assumed it was the owner of the skeleton I buried the first night I found this place. Or maybe that guy. I spent most of the following day just gathering wood and fixing the house. I didn't want anything coming in on me through the ceiling. And not knowing how long I'd stay in this place, I set up some storage. Eventually, I'd leave behind most of what I found anyway. The next day, I made my way to an abandoned house nearby came out with a decent amount of food and some medical supplies. After taking a moment to enjoy being out of what it was surely a death trap waiting to happen, I decided I had enough wood and headed into the swamp to gather one of the most important resources available in the wastelands, aloe. I noticed a young wolf pup sitting alone at the edge of a clearing and offered it a bone. She must have been half tame to begin with because she immediately began following me. I'd started this journey alone my home destroyed, and everything I loved gone. But that helpless creature needed me, and I began to once again feel a tiny sliver of hope. As I lay down to sleep in the house I'd repaired on my own, I knew what I would call the pup that lay snuggled beside me. I spent the rest of that first week digging around in the hill. I needed some iron, and digging a hole in the hill I was already living in seemed like the safest way to get my hands on some. By the end of that first week, I hadn't found a scrap of iron. But I'd managed to dig my way into a lush cave, one of the few places in the world that hadn't been laid to waste during the Great War. It was rumored that some of the first people to return to the surface were people who had taken shelter in these caves. Supposedly, there were entire cities hidden underground. I'd never seen one myself, but I'd seen enough of this world to know that anything was possible. The cave I found wasn't big enough for a city, but the glowberries I was able to harvest were enough to account for all the effort. Before I went to bed that night, I decided to spend the next few days searching the swamp for other empty houses. I had a list of things I needed, and I figured scavenging would be the fastest way to get most of them. 
The first day I'd gathered wood in the area, I'd seen a man-made monument at the edge of the trees, so I decided to check it out first. I didn't know what it was made of, but when I got close I saw there was iron in it and set to work, mentally kicking myself the whole time for not checking it out sooner. After taking the iron, I headed deeper into the swamp. I wasn't entirely sure what kinds of creatures made their home among the roots of the mangrove trees, but I'd seen enough to know people around here didn't last too long. Slugging my way through the thick, sticky mud, I began to seriously doubt my own sanity. The first house I encountered didn't have much in the way of resources, but I was pretty sure the skeleton on the floor wouldn't mind if I used his bag. I didn't know what I'd find on this scavenge, but I knew that I'd need space to carry it. I decided to make the trip a big circle and headed south, where I swam across the polluted channel and found a very interesting shrine to a giant white cat. I knew that people tended to seek out some sort of higher power in times of trouble, but I wasn't sure I'd have gone with a giant cat. I chose to leave the shrine alone. I didn't know what it represented, and the last thing I wanted to do was anger some strange cult of radioactive cat people. For all I know, they'd built the thing around a termite mound. I didn't want to take any chances with something that had that kind of potential. I found several more good places to loot, including a creeper nest. Funny thing about creeper nests, they're only active at night. Stealing their hoard during the day is really easy. On a random whim, I smashed a bit of tuft and uncovered a surface diamond. I immediately set to work making an iron pickaxe so I could dig it up. I couldn't do much with a single diamond, but a single diamond was a single diamond more than I'd had before. A little of this, a little of that, and more of the same, same, same. I trudged through the swamp at a leisurely pace, hope ever at my heels, and after four days I found myself back at the house in the hill. I scurried inside and took the time to unload my new backpack, putting everything away in a semi-organized manner. I silently sent out a thank you to whoever that skeleton had belonged to. I had a lot of stuff, and I couldn't have brought it back without the backpack. I hadn't gotten everything on my list, but I was pretty sure I had enough resources to justify spending the next day checking out the bunker. So that's exactly what I did. I was set. Med packs, bandages, aloe, meat that didn't have risky levels of radiation. I couldn't have come out of it better. I briefly enjoyed the satisfaction of a well-stocked medicine cabinet and decided to honor the lives of the people whose skeletons I'd found. Their losses had been my gain. I would go out and gather their bones and build them a place to finally rest in peace. It would be my thanks for their sacrifice, but it would have to wait until tomorrow. That sure was fun to make. If you liked it, be sure to give that like button a little tap. And if you don't want to miss chapter 2, I suggest making sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Love ya. Bye! Sometimes you just gotta believe.